Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at parts of standard unmodified audit opinion report for specifically non-public companies. Every time we hear the non-public companies, it means we are dealing with the AI CPA. This, this topic is typically covered in an auditing and attestation course and obviously on the CPA auditing exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, tax, and finance lectures. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it, it means they might benefit other people, so share the wealth. And please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you'll have additional resources, additional lectures, additional PowerPoint slides about auditing. And if you're studying for your audit exam, 500 plus CPA questions, I strongly suggest you check out my website for additional resources if you are serious about your passing about passing the exam. So what I'm going to do with the audit report, I'm going to break it down into eight components, which is those are the eight components of the audit reports. Anyhow, and we're going to go through it step by step. Then I will, you know, and I would reveal the audit report. The first part is the title. The title should report the, the report title should include the word independent. So that's the first that's the first part. Why the word independent? Because remember, the auditor is passing an opinion. So the for the opinion to be relevant, for the opinion to convey uh, to convey credibility, you have to be independent from the client. So the, it's, it has to say independent auditor's report. So that's the first part. The second part, who is the audit report addressed to. Usually it's the stockholders and the board of directors, not management. Again, to convey independence because if you are reporting to management and auditing management, your independence might be uh, might be jeopardized. So that's why we we address the report to the board of directors or to the stockholders. Basically the stockholders and elect the board of directors and in this situation to general ring company. The third component, which is this used to be the last component in the old report, so this is the new report, goes the auditor's opinion. So notice, it's at the beginning of the report, basically, okay? It used to be at the at the end of the report, um, well, the AICPA thought that it's, since the opinion is important, you want to put it first rather than last. So this is this is the auditor's conclusion, what the auditor thinks about the report. So let's take a look at this and see what do they say in their opinion, okay? We have audited the financial statements of Ring Company, which comprise the, comprise the balance sheet as of December 31st, 2019 and 2018. First, they tell you which financial, which financial statements they're auditing and the related statement of income changes of equity cash flow for the year ended as well. And notice it's comparative. Now here comes the opinion. In our opinion, in our opinion, but before we go to the opinion, notice that they explicitly said we audited. Audited means we did not issue a compilation. We did not, we did not conduct a review. We audited because aud audit has a higher assurance level than compilations and review. Okay. Now, in our opinion, this is important. This is where the auditor comes and talks about what did they find. In their opinion, the financial statements present fairly. What does it mean present fairly? It means they follow the guidelines that, that we used, whatever it's US GAAP or IFRS. They present fairly in all material respect, the financial position of the corporation as of December 31st, and as a result, its operation of cash flow for the year ended uh, in accordance with accept, generally accepted accounting principle of the United States. So they're using the uh, US, US gap, US gap. So this is the, basically, this is the most important, this is the most important. Why? Because when you look, when we, when we think of the audit report, we think of the opinion. That's what we think of. So that's why the opinion is extremely important. Okay. Now, remember, the, this opinion is not absolute. Um, this it's it's a reasonable it's based on a reasonable basis okay so they have to tell you which framework they use they use us gap now how did they come up with that opinion basis for the opinion so what did they do to come up with that opinion so th th that's in the fourth paragraph so this is the fourth paragraph in the fourth paragraph they talk about the basis of the opinion we conducted our audit in accordance with what did they use auditing standard generally 
accepted in the U.S., basically what we call GAS, G-A-A-S, G-A-A-S, GAS. So that's what they followed, obviously, GAS. Our responsibility with those standards are further described in the audit responsibility. So they're going to tell us what they're going to talk a little bit more about what was their responsibilities. What did they do? We are independent. Again, they mentioned this word independent repeatedly. That's, that's important of the company. And we have fulfilled other ethical responsibilities in according with the relevant ethical requirement related to our audit. So we follow ethical standard. We believe that the audit evidence we have obtained is sufficient and appropriate. Those are keywords to provide a basis for our opinion. So what is sufficient and appropriate? Well, we will learn about this when we look at the evidence, but we're saying here that we have enough evidence to issue our opinion. So the basis of our opinion is we followed guess that those are the techniques we collected enough evidence, uh, sufficient and appropriate, not enough, sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis. And we are independent from the company. So this is how we came up with our opinion. The fifth, the fifth one is the fifth part of it is management responsibility. And this is important. We want to know what is the management responsibility? Okay, we're auditing the financial statements. We told you our basis, but what's management responsibility? So this is important. Okay. Management is responsible for the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements in according with GAAP. So management prepared the financial statements. Also, management responsible for the design, implementation, and maintenance of internal control relevant to the preparation and fair presentation of the financial statements that are free of material misstatement, whether due to error or fraud. So basically what we're saying is, and this is important, they, you get tested a lot about this concept. Who's responsible for the financial statements? Management is responsible for the financial statements. All that we're doing is we're issuing an opinion, okay? So in preparing the financial statements, management is required to evaluate whether conditions or event is considered an aggregate that raise substan substantial doubt about the, the company's to, uh, ability to continue as a going concern. Also, management will have to assess if there's any going concern issue. Are we gonna be in business in the foreseeable future? The management will have to decide that. Now, auditor can pass a judgment on that, but that's the management assessment. That's the management assessment, the going concern assessment. So it's very important that the financial statements are the management responsibility. Then in number six, we're going to look at the auditor's responsibility. Now, this is important. So what is the auditor responsibility? We know that management basically responsible for um, for preparing the financial statements. So what is the auditor responsibility in all of this? The first thing we have to say is, what did we do? What's our auditor responsibility? Our objective is to maintain reasonable. Reasonable means not absolute assurance, whether the financial statements as a whole are free from material, notice material, not all the statement, whether those statements are due to fraud or errors, and to issue an auditor's report that include our opinion. So reasonable assurance, we're using reasonable assurance to assure an opinion. What is reasonable assurance? It's a high level of assurance, but not absolute. We, we can't be 100% sure. Therefore, it's not guaranteed that an audit conducted in according with GAS will always deduct material misstatement. So what they're saying here is, look, it's reasonable assurance. We followed GAP, but we cannot guarantee there are no errors. So the risk of not detecting a material misstatement resulting from fraud is higher than the one resulting from errors. And what they're telling us here is, if there is a fraud issue, the fraud will be higher to detect because the fraud may involve collusion, forgery, intentional emission, misrepresentation, or the override of internal control. So they're just warning us that if there's any fraud, it will be harder for us to catch the fraud. Because the error, if somebody made an error, they don't try to cover it, okay? But the fraud, you know, the part of it is try to cover the error. Okay, Mater material um, statement are considered material if individually or in aggregate, they could reasonably be expected to influence the economic decision of the users made on the basis of these financial statements. Now, what is materiality? We'll talk about materiality later on. So within this section, we have, the f this is the first paragraph. The second paragraph, they again, they, they specifically spell out how they conducted the audit. So again, we're still, we're still in paragraph six, but it's basically broken down, and I'm gonna break it down into three categories. So we looked at the first one, talking about reasonable assurance and opinion. Now, basically, we're going to look at the scope in performing an audit in according with GAS. What did we do? We used professional judgment and exercised professional skepticism. We were on the lookout. We, were all, we had a questioning mind. We did not let things slip through. We identify and assess the risk of material misstatement of the financial statements, whether it's 
It's due to error or fraud in design and perform audit procedures responsive to those risks. Such procedure exa include examining on a test basis. We didn't look at everything. Evidence regarding the amount and disclosure of the financial statement. Here, the auditor is basically spelling out exactly what they did. We also obtain an understanding of the internal control relevant to the audit in order to in order to design audit procedure that are appropriate in the circumstances. So we obtain the understanding so we can audit and not for the purpose. So notice here, we they explicitly said not the, for the purpose of issuing, expressing an opinion on the effectiveness. So we collected this information about the internal control, not not to express an opinion, but to make sure we can design audit procedures to test those control. But we're not expressing an opinion. Okay. We're, uh, in order to uh, audit procedure that are appropriate in the circumstances to be able to learn about the company, but not to express an opinion. That's important. We also evaluate. We also evaluate the appropriateness of accounting policies used and reasonableness of significance accounting estimate made by judgment Rem management. Remember, management makes those judgment, selecting the accounting pr policies uh, principles, uh, making significant estimate. But we can evaluate those. Okay. And also we evaluated the overall presentation of the consolidated financial statement. Okay. Conclude whether in our judgment there are conditions or event considered in the aggregate that raise substantial doubt about the general rank ability to continue as a going concern within one year. We also did this, uh, this going concern judgment. We also looked at, remember, management, look, management, um, uh, management raises substantial, uh, management look at the going concern assumption and the auditor also evaluate that going concern assumption as well. And the third paragraph within the auditor responsibility, they tell us that they are required to communicate with those charged with the governance regarding, among other matters, the plan, scope, and timing of the audit, significant audit finding, and the internal control rela related matters identified during an audit. So they're telling us also that they do communicate with the board of directors about certain issues, about plan and scope and timing of the audit, significant findings, so on and so forth. So they tell you this. The seventh part of the audit report is the signature and address of the audit firm, the signature Anderson and Zinder PC CPA and in what city they are located. So they tell us where are they located in the name of the firm rather than the name of the individual and rather than the name of the individual because technically the firm is responsible, not the individual that conducted the audit that conducted the audit. And the last part is the date. This is the eighth part and they, the date is February 15th, 2020. The audit report date, that date the auditor has obtained sufficient and appropriate evidence. Now remember the financial statements are as of December 31st. So it took them a month and a half, all of January and half of February to issue those financial to issue the report. And it's the date is important. Why? Because what we're saying is we are responsible up to until February, until February the 15th. So we were looking for material unrecorded transaction that occur up to February the 15th. That's what they're saying here. So that's important. So those are the eight parts of an unmodified audit opinion. So it's very important that you are familiar with the audit report, with the format of the audit report, because on the CPA exam, they do ask you what goes where. And this is a new audit report. The old one, they used to have the opinion, this opinion here, the last, the last. So this is, I broke it down into two PowerPoint slides because it's a long report. In the next session, what we would look at is condition for standard unmodified audit opinion. So when when can we issue this um, standard unmodified audit opinion? As always, I would like to remind you, if you like my lectures, please like them. Go ahead and click on the like button. It doesn't cost you anything. Share them, put them in playlist. And if you want additional material to supplement your studies or to help you pass the CPA exam, you may need those extra seven to 10 points. Check out my website. I do have those resources. Study hard. The CPA is worth it.